Hello and welcome to On Point. I'm Monica Trousey. With me today is Joel Velasco, the North American rep for the Brazilian Sugarcane Industry Association. Joel, it's good to see you again. Very good to see you. Joel, ethanol subsidies are set to expire at the end of this year, and the debate is heating up over whether to extend these incentives. And there are two credits at play here, a tax credit uh, for blending ethanol with gasoline and an import tax on foreign ethanol. Let's talk about the import tax, because that's what concerns your, your organization. Obviously, it would be to your organization's best interest if it was removed. But what about the U.S. economy and the biofuels industry here in the U.S.? What would that mean? Well, the reality is we, we think that both the tax credit and the import duty uh, should actually be removed. After, In fact, coming December 5th, we'll be celebrating 30 years of these programs. Uh, it was actually created in a lame duck session of Congress. Uh, and we think that it's now time to move on. And the reality is every academic or uh, government agency, Congressional Budget Office, General Accounting Office, uh, have looked at this and said that actually With competition, the U.S. ethanol industry, primarily corn ethanol, can compete in an open marketplace, and there's no reason to spend $6 billion of taxpayer money plus impose a a trade-distorting tariff on imported ethanol to maintain this this market. So what position would it put the Brazilian industry in uh, if the if the tax, uh, if the tariff was removed? Well, I think what it's actually going to do is going to put in a position where the world is going to be, Brazil reduced its, tra- its barriers on uh, ethanol earlier this year uh, and has committed to doing so through uh, so long as the U.S. Uh, moves forward. So Brazil took the first step. And the, because both countries need to really build a global biofuels industry, if both countries reduce these barriers, there's going to be more competition. And we'll actually be able to tell the rest of the world that uh, indeed now it's time uh, to give biofuels a chance to impose uh, uh, sustainability requirements, to impose uh, uh, greenhouse gas requirements around the world. But the first step is really for the first, the biggest uh, countries in this space to take the first step and remove their barriers and open themselves to competition. And there's a lot of money to be made for your industry. Well, I think there, most studies have indicated that what, what there would be is low, uh, lower volatility in ethanol prices, which is going to allow for greater investments in ethanol production here in the U.S. and abroad. In fact, the University of Iowa State University professor Bruce Babcock looked at this and he said, yes, Brazil will export a, a little bit more, probably about, uh, I think, 700 million gallons by 2014. Uh, and But what would really mean to consumers is actually a lower price at the pump with that added competition. So you would say be saving between now and then about $30 billion in taxpayer subsidies. You would have lower price at the pump for consumers, and you would provide you diversify America's fuel supply away from just one feedstock. So this essentially means that the U.S. ethanol industry would be losing its training wheels. Um, what 30-year-old training wheels. <laughs> so in terms of maturity and profitability, where do you think the U.S. ethanol industry stands right now? Well, it's clearly profitable. In fact, uh, last count, uh, in fact, you're still seeing uh, consolidation in the industry just the last few days. You've seen some of those movements. And today there's about, uh, I would think nearly half of the industry is consolidated into about four players. And why are they doing that? Because it is a profitable business. In fact, corn ethanol today is competitive with gasoline, uh, even without the tax credit. And I think that's what consumers and, 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 and voters are realizing is why are we putting money into an industry that is already mature? President Obama has called it mature earlier this year uh, during uh, a report of the inter- uh, Interagency Biofuels Working Group. Um, most uh, scholars have come to that conclusion it's a mature industry. So why do we need to spend those taxpayer dollars to subsidize an industry that is uh, very mature? A 30-year-old person, I'm a little bit more than 30 years old, and, and I'm, I'm, I can handle myself here. How about the corn ethanol industry compete on a level playing ground? And what that will do, again, it is diversifying America's fuel supply. It is reducing prices at the pump. And again, remembering that the key thing here will be also to mitigate uh, uh, climate change, which I think the EPA has really taken a great uh, step forward in that. So let's make sure we're being clear here. You're talking about the corn ethanol industry, but what about the next gen- generation, the second generation biofuels? Well, the VTEC, the 45 cent per gallon tax credit, does not apply to the second generation because the, 
The second generation is guaranteed. In fact, uh, uh, Congress uh, in the House has already approved expanding the, the $1 a gallon tax credit to the algae industry. So the algae industry, the cellulosic industry, is guaranteed about a dollar per gallon tax credit, uh, and that is a domestic subsidy only. It is, there's no way the imported product can get that subsidy. So the second and third generation industry have a bright future in front of it. Uh, you've just seen, I think, Amaris raising about $100 million. Amaris is a second generation technology in the New York stock market this, this past week. Uh, and I think those are the signs that, that you're going to see that that industry is going to succeed. But it's only going to succeed if we put uh, uh, them on a level playing field. And if corn ethanol you know, is able to uh, dominate the fuels market and the biofuels market in the U.S., I'm not sure that uh, we're ever going to get there. The U.S. government has offered plenty of other industries, including the oil industry, incentives for decades. So why should the ethanol be- industry be different? Well, first, I think the oil industry, I'm not defending at all those subsidies. In fact, I think those should also go, and I think there's a pretty clear mood in Congress that they should go. Uh, we'll see if they, they can live up to. But, you know, it, it, this is sort of, you know, my, my five-year-old debating with my three-year-old. Well, he, did, he hit me first. You know, let's just start with the facts. It's time to, to deal with this policy. Uh, this, this subsidy, the VTEC, the $0.45 cent per gallon tax credit, costs us $6 billion a year. The $0.54 cent tariff on imported et- ethanol that's been f- there for 30 years is protecting uh, that industry from competition. And plus, we have a mandate. The oil industry does not have a mandate to consume their product. Now, they've got, we've got to deal with flex fuel cars and other things like that, but uh, the ethanol industry has a mandate, so it needs to say which one it wants, mandates or subsidies, because I don't think they can have both. Considering the state of the U.S. economy, is it even logical to remove these incentives at this point? I mean, is there a risk posed for job losses and uh, a risk to the industry? And do we want to do it right now with the economy where it is? Well, clearly the, the domestic ethanol industry is trying to, per, to put forth this fear-mongering idea that there will be 150,000 jobs losses. University, Iowa State University, Professor Bruce Babcock looked at it and says maybe 300, 400 jobs in 2014 would be lost. That's about $20 million per job that the U.S. would be spending to save those jobs. I think there's probably a better way to do that. And uh, at the end of the day, this is an industry that needs to compete, and we're ready to compete. And I think the corn ethanol industry is more than ready to compete, and Congress just needs to let these two policies expire. Okay, we'll end it there. Thank you for coming on the show. And thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.